This is Shape E. Shape E is a text to 3D model AI module that generates pretty much 3D models from your text or images. It's made by OpenAI and it is free to use. You can check it out on the Hug and Face page. Unfortunately, there's a lot of traffic and it, it takes forever to get it to work due to the high demand for it. So yeah, I went to the community tab and I saw somebody asking for a Blender add-on. And I was like, you know, that will really improve the workflow if we could use this model from inside of Blender. I really see the value on that. I don't have much knowledge with Blender or Python, but I'm gonna do my best to port this model into Blender as an add-on. All right. So I didn't manage to do it. And this is how you can get it installed. First, go ahead and download the files and extract them. They're going to take a while because the model is big. And I also brought a bunch of free download libraries for Python. So you welcome. Once you get that done, you can check the readme folder for more instructions if you get lost. But uh, you know, first you want to press the Windows key and R and then you want to type percentage app data percentage and then click OK. This will open your app data local folder and you can paste the Python folder from your download add-on installation. Run Blender 3.5 as admin. You're going to have to install the add-on now. So you want to go into preference, install and go to the folder and find the folder called install add-on.zip. This should take a few minutes, so don't get scared. But once it's installed, you should be good to go. So just go ahead and open your toolbox. And here you got your toolbox. It is very simple to use and very straightforward. You have your generate model button, and then you have your prompt batch which you can type one prompt for a 3d model to be generated or you can type multiple you put a comma in between them and it will read each one separately as a separate object for example a cow comma a dog and it will generate a cow and a dog then you have your seeds zero is random by default after that you have your guidance scale I noticed that the lower the guidance, the, the smaller the model, the lower you want to have your guidance scale from around 8 to 10. But ideally, 15 is the best option for most 3D models. And then you have your number of steps. The more steps, the longer it's going to take to generate those models, as some of you might know. But yeah, then you have your batch, which for example, if you type a prompt of a cow and you type a thousand batch, it will generate a thousand cows. All differently, of course, because they will be using a different seed, each of them. And if you type a cow and a dog, then it will generate a thousand cows and a thousand dogs. But yeah, be careful with that. When you run the model, you want to open your terminal so you can see the action in real time. Go ahead and wish your GPU good luck and go ahead and type anything and run it. You should be good to go. The time for me, because I'm recording, you know, the iterations is low. I'm running this on an RTX 2060, which is a pretty small cart, but very efficient. I found out it's about 20 seconds per 3D model, which comes down to like 10 minutes for 25 30 models. And uh, here we are. It's, it's not bad. And then you can use GPT chat to uh, help you generate new prompts and new ideas for your models. You know, you can engineer it like that. Tell them to use A as a descriptive of an object and make sure they are in singular. Don't use plurals like walls, just wall. And then go ahead and run it. Go take a break, watch some anime, eat some popcorn and just chill for a bit. This took about eight minutes in total, which it's not bad at all. <laughs> so once it's done, it's going to be very laggy due to the fact that every model has a lot of resolution. I know it's a pain, but bear with me. You want to go ahead and hide them as quick as you can. Fortunately, they come in each collection 
based on the title of the first prompt in the prompt batch. So I'm going to use some modifiers to reduce the resolution, especially remesh and decimate to clean it up a bit. For this game that I'm working on, I planning on using a voxel art style, so I'm just going to use the voxel and the in the remesh option to create the best possible static models. So we're going to go ahead and do that for every single one of them. And yeah, let's optimize each model as best as we can. As you can see, I generated other prompts and I went back to GPT chat to get other ideas for other things that I needed for my game or my scene. And then just click generate and 20 seconds later, boom, you have your 3D model. After that, I created the scene that I wanted to make and just placed the objects in the area that I envisioned them. At this point in time, they won't have any textures added to them. For that, we're going to use a different AI called Dream Texture, which most of you will love. It will pretty much generate a texture and project it onto the 3D model. It is actually very useful and again, goes well with a fast workflow. So yeah, using some post-processing techniques to give it a nice look, nice shading, and, uh, and make it look aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> Well guys, here we go. This is the scene. I'm kind of happy with the result. I wanted to turn it into a game, but unfortunately I ran out of time and I really wanted this add-on to be out there. So uh, thank you so much for watching. The link for the add-on is in the description. You can go ahead and click it and hopefully some of you will be able to get it. Unfortunately, it's not a free add-on since I'm unemployed and I'm probably going to be homeless very soon. So yeah, go ahead and check it out if you want to get it. If this channel gets 10,000 subscribers. I will most definitely make the add-on free. It's the first version, it's very buggy. So I recommend you guys to just thread carefully. Do not use cycles at the same time as the add-on. As long as the add-on is enabled, do not use the cycles render engine. I, I, you will, it will crash. I don't know why. I think it's because the model is loaded into the memory, but don't use cycles. And check your temp folder, make sure to delete your temp folder because every 3D model you generate will be saved in the temp folder. That way, in case of the program crashing, you won't lose all the 3D models. So yeah, guys, if you have any more questions, link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to make this add-on free. I really want to make it free, but uh, yeah, I'm about to be homeless. Bye.